This is a good summary of what you're gonna see on the test. This is a little bit of everything. Combine this with the great big unit review that I gave you and you shouldn't really see any true surprises on the test. My favorite student. Thought I was your favorite student, Mr. Duick. Nope, truth hurts. Okay. Number one, when you toss a fair die three times, how many times? Three. three. Now, three, I might not do a tree, but the nice thing with dice is the odds don't change each time. Maybe I can keep track of this. It says, what's the probability that you will get a five on the first toss, comma, I think, and, a six on the second toss, and any number except a two on the last toss? I think to myself it's going to be... What's the probability that I get a five on the first toss? What's the probability that I get a six on the second toss? What's the probability that I get any number but a two? What is the probability that you don't roll a two? And you know what? This one I can do in my head because it's top times top times top. And I know that 6 cubed is 216. The answer is 5 out of 216. Did anybody go to a decimal? I don't know what it is as a decimal, but it's 5 out of 216. Generally, if I start with fractions, I tend to leave them as fractions. If I start with decimals or I'm using combinatorics, I tend to go to decimals in my answer. Just not right or wrong. It's just kind of what happens, partly because that's the way my calculator tends to go. Example two. How many cards? Tree. Five cards, bucket. Three cards, maybe bucket, unless it's all the same event, then maybe I can just draw that single branch of the tree in my head. So, two cards, tree. It says the first card is a heart or not. That's the first event. And the second card is a heart or not, heart, or not. Now, because it's asking heart one, heart two, I could be really lazy and just fill in that branch. But as I've been helping students, Connor, I've noticed kids are having trouble even just filling in the branches. So I'm going to walk through this. Connor, my friend, how many hearts are there in the deck? I know you're eating, but I want your focus. You play 14? 14? Out of how many? Thank you. How many non-hearts are there in the deck? I hope you didn't count. You're, you're using the trick of the compliment, right? Out of 52. Down this first branch, now it does say without replacement. That means you're hanging on to the card each time, which means on the second level, how many cards are left in the deck grand total? I'm going to be asking you questions, so you may as well chew and talk at this. Yeah? Good. It's going to be out of 51, it's going to be out of 51, it's going to be out of 51, it's going to be out of 51. Sorry if you can't see that in the back, I'm writing really small. How many hearts down this branch, how many hearts are left in the deck? 12. And still 39. Here, 13 and 38. Now, questions that I could ask on the test. Are you ready? Questions that I will ask on the test in all likelihood. Uh, one like number two, which says a heart followed by a heart. That's 13 out of 52 and 12 out of 51. That's that branch right there. I could say, what's the probability that you don't get a heart? Don't get a heart is that branch right there, 39 out of 52 times 38 out of 51. Or I could say, get exactly one heart, that branch, or that branch. Or I could say, get at least one heart. At least one heart means one or two. It means that, means that branch or that branch or that branch. That's all I can do with a two-level tree that has two outcomes on each level. That's every possible combination. No pun intended. That's every possible possibility. So this is going to be If you didn't write it in lowest terms, it's going to be 13 times 12. It's going to be 156 over 2652, or in lowest terms, it's going to be 126 fraction button 2652, uh, 21 over 442. Did anybody decimalize it? 156 is what I wrote, right? Did I say 126? 
I said it, it is 150. Is it not 156? Oh, I typed 120. I'm sorry. Now I get what you're getting at. The Hey, do it. Don't make a mistake. There's a classic mistake. Note to self, get mad at myself and be way more careful on my calculator next time. Check before I hit enter. Zoom back out. Check what I wrote. See if it matches what I typed. Uh, one out of 17, is that what you're saying? Did anybody decimalize it? Because that's a yucky decimal. By the way, that's a decimal that repeats. It does. What's the bottom number? 17. It's 16 digits before it starts to repeat. So that's why the fraction is much nicer. Okay. One mark. Number three. I'm going to ask you a dice question, I'm fairly certain, on your test. If they give me two dice, if they ask me to throw a pair of dice, you made it? I'll harass you in a second in love. We're marking the quiz. I'll get to you in a bit. Um, if they ask me to throw two dice, best way to handle it is a sample space. And by a sample space, I mean this. Put one dice here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's call this one the black, since they distinguished color and put one dice here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to call this one the white, and then I just list the combinations, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, two, 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 uh, sorry, two, one, Two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six. And you may say, hey, Mr. Duke, this takes a while. You're going to end up writing 36. It'll take you probably 60 seconds, grand total, because you'll do about one a second, though maybe a bit longer. Three, one, three, two, three, 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 four, three, five, three, six, four, one, Four, two, four, three. I can't talk and write this at the same time, sorry. Okay. There's my sample space. What do they want me to find? I'll give you a hint. Find what it says after the word find. Jordan, can you read? What do they want me to find? I'll give you a hint. Find what it says after the word find. OK, I'll talk to you later. Sorry? Say that again. I was being distracted doing some classroom management. Find the probability that the total is eight. So the stop. Given. given. Did you say given? Given. So my approach is what I've told you. When they give me that conditional, when they give me that given, it's both of those divided by the given one. So as an expression, it's going to be both of those. So T and B divided by... Okay. Now, what's that going to look like? Uh, T and B, total adds to 8, and the black one is 2. First of all, black starts with a 2 is that row there. How many of those add to 8? The probability that the total is 8 and we start with a black is 1 out of 36. That's what's on the top. The bottom one says, uh, oh, uh, the black number starts with a 2. That's the row where the black number starts with a 2. How many are in that row? There's 
There's a little twist on conditional probability. Yeah, go ahead. Let me start over. You have to wrap your brain around this. You ready? So, what are they asking me to find? Christina, what are they asking me to find? For the first part? This whole, what are they asking me to find? Read that. What does T stand for? Uh, total. To so, you say the word total. Okay, so go ahead. Total. Given that. Oh. Given that. No, get your hand away from your mouth. Sorry, I want the whole, and I want because I want the whole class to hear. This is important. I'm not trying to pick on you. This is this is fundamental here. So go ahead. What are we trying to find? Read the thing again. The probability of the total equals eight given that the black die. Okay. So here's this is the row that this is the black column, right? So here's the whole row where the black die is a two. That that starts with a two. You okay with that? I identified that. I said, okay, this is conditional. What does conditional say? Conditional says the answer is going to be both of them divided by the given one. You okay with that so far? Now, what's both of them? Look at what I circled. That's the only one that adds to 8 and starts with a black 2. That's the only one that satisfies both of them. How many have I circled? One out of how many different combinations grand total? Six by six is? The bottom is going to be black, two. That's this whole row. How many are in this whole row? Out of how many grand total? Oops, oh, sorry, why did I write a three? Because I'm six. That's, that's going to be how I calculate it. Now, when I type that into my calculator, when I go 1 fraction 6 divided by, sorry, 1 fraction 36 divided by 6 fraction 36, you can use your calculator or you can say, how do I divide by a fraction? I flip it and multiply. I think no matter what, you get 1 sixth. And now that I see that answer, I see for this one a shortcut that could have worked. I think what I could have said is, oh, if I know that I had to start with a black 2, how many of those are adding to 8? 1 out of 6. Now I actually see that, but I found that using the conditional probability because I wasn't quite sure if I could use that shortcut. Okay? Is that all right? Okay? Jacob's blocking you as he takes his shirt off. At least you're trying to wake up. Don't want to be drowsy. Number 5. Sorry, number 4. Number four. Okay. Justin, can you read number four? No, I think I picked on you already, didn't I? Nope. No. Justin, read five, number four to me. The, the five people how many people? Five. We're selecting how many people? Again? Five people. I don't think I want to do a five level tree. So I wrote here use a bucket. This is important. I'm giving you hints because I don't think on the test I'm going to tell you to use a bucket. How do I know to use a bucket here? We have two different groups. We're picking five people. I could do this with a five-level tree, but it would take up a whole page. Okay? Keep reading. R randomly? R randomly selected from a group of five boys and five girls. Four boys and five girls, but that's okay. Keep going. Determine the probability that exactly three girls are selected. So I'm picking five people. I have two groups. I would use a bucket. I would say, okay, boys. Girls. What's going to go right here, Justin, my friend? Under boys. Sorry? Four. Yes. What's going to go under girls? Five. How many girls do I want to choose? Three. Now I have to use some reasoning. Uh, how many people am I choosing grand total? What does the question say? Five. So how many boys must I choose? Uh, three. How many girls am I choosing? How many girls did you say I'm choosing? So how many boys must I be choosing? Two. What's my equation, folks? Do you see it? If I just asked you how many groups I could form, which was last unit, it would be, oh, you can form four, choose two, and five, choose three. If I want to turn this into a probability, into a decimal to find the probability, I say, oh, then divide by how many groups you can form grand total, which is what, choose what. It's hidden in here, which is what choose what? 
Nine people choose five grand total. <coughs> oh, good gosh. I'm using my fraction button like an idiot. Thank you. Let's try that again. Four choose two and five choose three over nine choose five. And I get 0. 0.4762. Will it give it to me as a fraction? I don't know. Uh, or 10 over 21. Okay. Bucket. Turn the page, or next page across. Next page across. Brandon, can you read number five to me, play, please? Two dart How many dart players? Two. I'm leaning towards a tree already, but I'm going to read the question, but I'm trying to give you how I figure out my approach. Keep reading. Two dart players, you Stop. The word independently means whether the first guy hits or misses won't affect whether the second guy hits or misses. It means the tree is going to be a little easier to go with. Keep going. Uh, one dart. One dart out of target. The probability of 0 0.3 and 0 point, yeah. okay. What does the word respectively mean? In, in that order. In other words, the point 0.3 goes with player one, the point 0.4 goes with player two, okay. Keep reading. What is the probability that at least one event will hit a bullseye? So I'm going to go like this. Who's throwing first? Just, who's throwing first? Player one. Point. Brandon, who's throwing first? Player one, okay? What are the options for player one? Hit or miss? What are the options? Hit or miss? So ready? Here's my tree. It's going to look like this. I got player one. Hit or miss? Right? Player two can hit or miss. Hit or miss. I'm just going to use two and not two as though they missed. What am I going to put on this brand? Uh, hit for player two is what, Brandon? What about a miss? 0.6, 0.4, 0 0.6. There's my tree. Can you read to me the question sentence again, starting with the word what? Okay, let's walk down each branch. Down this branch, does at least one of them hit a bullseye? Yep. Down this branch, does at least one of them hit a bullseye? Yeah, the first guy does. Down this branch, does at least one of them hit a bullseye? Yeah. Second guy does. Down this branch, does at least one of them hit a bullseye? No. Multiply down, add across. So one way to do this then is going to be to say, oh, the answer is going to be 0.3 times 0.4 or 0.3 times 0.6 or 0.7 times 0.4. That's one way to do it. The up, sorry, Tiff, what? In fact, that's what I would have done. I would have said this is the same as, because I only got one branch that's not got a check mark under it, so why don't I go 1 minus 0.7 times 0.6. In fact, I think I can do that in my head. 7 times 6 is 42, so 0.7 times 0.6 is going to be 0.42. 1 minus 0.42. Is the answer 0.58? I think, yeah. And I'll stick with the decimal because they gave me my probabilities as decimals. Is that right? No response, which suggests people haven't done the quiz. Hmm. Okay. Number 6. It says, bag A contains one red, two white marbles. Bag B contains one white, two red marbles. 
Marble is randomly chosen from bag A and placed in bag B. A marble is then randomly chosen from bag B. Determine the probability that the marble selected from bag B is white. This is tough if you don't think about it the right way. If you think about it the right way, actually all it is is a medium complicated tree, but Rosanna, once you have the tree in place, it's gonna be again, walk down the right branch. So there's two things going on here. I think the two events that are going on here is, you're gonna pick from bag A. What are the possibilities when you pick from bag A? What can you get? What's the probability that you get a red from bag A? Okay. Then we move to bag B. For bag B, it looks like you can have, again, red or white, red or white. <coughs> You know what a clever notation would be? Would, I think a clever notation would be, I'll put an A there, I'll put an A there, I'll put a B, a B, a B, a B. Okay with that, Ellen? Okay, now I actually have to carefully walk down each branch because this is very dependent. This is not independent. Okay? Caitlin, my angel, down this branch here, down the left-hand branch, I picked a red marble and I put it into B. That's what it says, right? I pick a marble from A and I put it into B. So how many red marbles were there in bag B originally, Caitlin, my angel? I just added one. How many now? Out of? Grand total, how many marbles are in bag B? Not three anymore, but say four. Yep. I think this is going to be three out of four. See it? Oh, and I'm pretty sure one out of four because they got to add to one. Jacob, down this branch, I picked a white marble and I put it into bag B. So how many white marbles are now in bag B? Not one. How many are now in bag three? Three white marbles? How many were we starting out with in bag B? And I added one, so that makes. I took a white. I got a white from bag A. I put it into bag B. So how many were in bag B originally? Okay. So we got two whites out of originally three marbles, but I've added one. So how many marbles now? Originally three marbles, but I've added one. So how many marbles now? Four. Okay, but I'm. Brain's got to stay clear. Okay. What goes here, folks? Two, it's got to be two out of four because it's got to add to one. Compliment, right? Connor, as I said, this question, once you get the tree set up, falls apart. It's a tricky tree. What does this want me to find? Rosanna, can you read to me the last sentence? Nice and loud, please. You know what? I think that's that branch or that branch, right? Those are the two branches that end in getting a white marble from B. Multiply down, add across. It's going to be one third times one quarter or two thirds times two quarters. It's going to end up being one out of 12 plus 4 out of 12, it's going to end up being 5 out of 12. The way I would probably mark this, I would give you one mark for the tree and one mark for the answer. That's why it's worth two marks. Okay. I don't know, in fact, I do know. I'm not going to give you one quite that tricky on your test, but I wanted to show you that actually a tree, we can handle it. It's got, we just got to really think it step by step by step. We can't be just casual in drawing the tree. Next page.
If I read number seven, Colin, I think two things are happening. I'm picking a jar, then I'm picking a ball. How many things are happening? Two. Two, tree. Okay. If I was picking like three or four marbles, I'd do some kind of a bucket. I don't know quite what it would look like, but I'd, I'd have to come up with something. But here, since the events are pick a jar, pick a marble, two, tree. So it looks like my tree is going to look like this. Pick a jar. Now, sometimes it's just 50-50. But I think in this one, if you read the paragraph, I gave you some instructions to determine how you pick between jar A and jar B. What's the probability that we actually pick jar A? Or jar, sorry, it's not, they didn't use A and B, Mr. Duick. Uh, jar 1. Jar two, how about J1, J2? What's the probability that you pick jar one? Two out of six, and that means this one has to be four out of six. Okay, then jar one has red, white, black. Jar two has also red, white, Black, so no different colors, that's convenient. Uh, sorry? Two out of four for some dumb reason when it should be two out of six. I don't know what's going on here. I'm slumping too, apparently, after my lecture with you guys. Thank you, Colin. Candy for you later for catching a mistake. Hey, Colin, you're on a roll. Let's look at jar one. How many reds are there in jar one? Three out of ten. How many whites? Two out of ten. Five out of ten. What about jar two? Four out of, is it out of eleven? Nine and, uh, out of twelve, I think? Five out of twelve. Three out of twelve. By the way, I could actually, I guess, pick one more mar marble Doing one more tree level would be yucky, but doable. It, it's right on my cutoff threshold before I choose to go to a bucket. Colin, while you're on a roll, what does A want me to find? Or, right? Probability of selecting a red ball, it's jar one and red, or jar two and red. It's two out of six, three out of 10, or four out of six, four out of 12. I can already see I'm not gonna have a nice common denominator, so I'm gonna wimp out and go straight to my fraction button on my calculator. Or four out of six and four out of 12. And I get 29 out of 90, not a number I would have come up with on my own, but good enough. Apparently the probability of getting a red, 29 out of 90. This one is worth two. I would give you probably one mark for the tree, and then I would probably give you a half mark for the numbers and a half mark for the answer. Did anybody give their answer as a decimal? Okay. B. Brooke, can you read B to me, please? Stop. There's my trigger. This is conditional. Okay? This, I'm going to use the formula along with this lovely tree that I drew. So you ready, Brooke? We're going to start over. I'm going to go, what do they want me to find? I'm going to draw a probability, a bracket, a bracket with a big given bar right there. Read again. Start over. Stop. Given what? The R goes there. Keep reading. What is the prob probability that it comes from jar one? Find what? Jar one. That's how we put it together. What's that going to be? What I've told you on your formula sheet is it's both of those on the top, <clears throat> that branch, divided by the given one, both of those branches. It's going to be... 2 out of 6 and 3 out of 10. That's jar 1 and R. 
divided by r, which is 2 out of 6 and 3 out of 10, or 4 out of 6 and 4 out of 12, or if I'd been really clever, I could have just put my answer from part A, because I already happened to crunch that for part, I know that that bottom works out to 29 out of 90. And in fact, that's what I'm probably going to do on my calculator, because I'm lazy. This is going to be 2 fraction 6 and 3 fraction 10 over 29 over 90. How do I divide by a fraction? I flip it and multiply. Eh, I'm going to use the fraction button on my calculator. 1 fraction 10 divided by 29 fraction 90. 9 out of 29. Anybody decimalize that? Okay. Now, for two marks, how would I give you part marks? I would go something like this. I would give you a half mark for recognizing that it's conditional and getting the statement right. I would give you a half mark if I saw that on the top. I would give you a half mark if I saw either the long written out version or the simplified version on the bottom, and then I would give you a half mark for the correct answer. But if you got the right answer, you get two out of two. Is that okay so far? Next page. If one of the 19 equally likely outcomes in the sample space S is randomly selected, oh, Venn diagram questions. Okay. A and B occurs. What's the answer? Right? That's A and B as a picture. 2 out of 19. One mark. A and not B occurs. So A occurs, but B does not occur. Which of those is inside A but not inside B? 4 out of 19. Neither A nor B occurs. I think that's this section right here. Oop. Come on. 8 out of 19. At least one of A or B occurs. At least means one or the other or both. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Or I could have gone 19 take away 8. But you know what? At least is going to be 11 out of 19. At most, one of A or B occurs. So that means A or B, but not both. How many is that one? Yeah, it's that or that but not the overlap. Nine. Or was that Finn saying no? Oh, Finn's not here anymore. He went home yesterday. Ooh. F says A occurs. What's the word after the word given, Roy? Sorry, puh. What's the word after the word occurs, Roy? Given. Conditional. Okay, so that's going to look like this. Given B, find A, which is going to be A and B over the B given one, B. I already did A and B right there. And B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, it's seven, not five, it's seven out of 19. You know what? This works out to two out of seven. Two out of seven. A occurs given, if you know B has occurred, the probability that A also occurred is two out of seven. What about B occurs given that A has occurred? That's going to be B given A, which again is going to be both. But the given one this time is A. Both is still 2 over 19. 
over, but how many are in A? One, two, three, four, five, six out of 19. This ends up being two out of six, or one third. Conditional. Number 10. I hope this is helping. I gave you a big quiz on purpose. Machine A produces 60% of a product. Machine B produces 40%. 3% of production comes from machine A is defective. 2% is defective from machine B. It says find the probability that a, machine is a product is defective. I guess it works like this. Pick a machine, defective or not. My tree is going to look like this. What's the probability that it came from machine A? 60% as a decimal 0.6.4. Then we can be defective or not, defective or not. You're either one or the other. If you're from factory or machine A, what's the probability that you're defective? What percent? Three, so what's that as a decimal? 0 0.03, 0 0.97. If you're from machine B, 0 0.02, 0 0.98. I've got my tree, now I can answer the question. Silka, what's this question want me to find? Can you read A to me? Find what? I think that branch or that branch. I think 0.6 times 0 0.03 or 0 0.4 times 0 0.02. 0 0.026. This is a pretty good factory, pretty good company. Very few of their products are defective. You got a 2.6% chance. They've got some good quality control. B. B. Kyla, can you read B to me, please, kiddo? What does it want me to find? What is the probability that it was produced by what? You, you notice they're asking me this level. And what have they told me? If what? They've t you know what? This is a given. This is a conditional. And I, on purpose, didn't use the word given, the trigger word, to show you another way you could recognize that you've got a two-level tree, and they're asking you something about the top level and telling you something about the bottom level. This is actually saying, hey, if you know it's defective, what's the probability that it came from? B, which is which is going to be B and D, 0.4 times 0 0.02. Whoop, that's terrible. Divided by. D, which is those two branches, I could rewrite that, or I can just clue in it's 0 0.026 because I've conveniently already crunched that. Point 0.4 times point oh 0.02 divided by point zero 0.026. 30.77%. Point 3077. So this question I said was worth three marks. I would go something like this. One mark for the tree. One mark if you got that. Really should make B worth more, but on the quiz, oh whatever. 
I guess I'm going to say a half mark for that. Half mark for that. Boy, that doesn't give you any marks for the answer. You know what? I'm not going to give you any marks for the tree for some reason. I'm going to go a half mark for the answer here, and I'm going to go a half mark for the numbers there. That's probably how I'd do it. But if you got the right answer, you get three out of three. Yep. I'm good. I didn't tell you what to round off to. Yes, yeah, so point three oh eight. I'd probably even take point three one, but probably wouldn't take point three. It's a little bit too much rounding off. Number eleven. I wrote here the next two questions use the binomial probability distribution. Here's how else that you could tell without me giving you the hint. In number 11, how many people are there grand total that we're selecting or that we're picking or that we're ex uh, doing experiment from? 25. Do I want you to do a 25 level tree? So it's either bucket or binomial. How do you know binomial and not bucket? Because the odds don't change. The odds of one person being left-handed is the same as the odds of the next person being left-handed is the same as the odds of the next person being left-handed. The fancy word for that was independent. So how do we do this one? Well, we can either use our formula, which was from 25 people, choose three I think I meant to say exactly three are left-handed, but we'll see. I think it's going to be a really small answer that you have. Yeah, this is a really small answer. Yeah, I think Mr. Duick meant to say left-handed. Anyways, three right-handers. The probability of being right-handed is 0.9, 90%. Three of them. Probability of being left-handed is 0.1. And I guess I want 22 of them. Or you could also go like this. Where you have x equals 3, number of trials equals 25, and p equals 0.9. And that was menu, stat, distribution, binome, BPD var for variable, where x equals 3, 25, 0 0.9. Yeah, really small number. 1.68 times 10 to the negative 19 is what that's saying, because Mr. Duick got his rights and lefts mixed up. Yes? Can you wait for like three more minutes till I finish the quiz? Okay. One point six eight times ten to the negative nineteen. Okay. B says, what's the probability that in a group of twenty-five people exactly one person is left-handed? This is what I really meant to ask. So you can go like this. 25 people choose one lefty. What's the probability that you're left-handed? 0.1. One of them. 0.9. 24 of them. Or you can go B, P, D, and you can say X equals 1, num equals 25, and the probability that you're a lefty is 0.1. I'm going to use that method because it's quicker. 1, 25, 0 0.1. Yeah, that's better. 0 0.1994. 9, I'm a lefty. Who's the left handed here? 2, 3, 4. What's the probability that out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22, 23, 24, there's 20, oh, 25. Is, are you left-handed as well, Rosanna, or not? Oh, 
You raise your hand. Hey, what are the odds that there's exactly four of us left-handed? Because there is 25 of us in the class. And I did look it up. It is 10% of the population. That number is accurate. Huh. Only a 14% chance. So we got more lefties than we should. Because there's a 19% chance that there's exactly one lefty. What's the probability that in a group of 25 people, there are two or fewer who are left-handed? I included the answer. Now, why did I do that? Maybe I wanted to let you know if you were doing it right and you had to show work. I think that was my thing. Two or fewer means two or fewer, I can use the cumulative distribution function, the B, C, D. If I then go x equals two or fewer, num equals 25, and p equals, we want left-handed, 0.1. If I go distribution and I use the cumulative, two or fewer, 25.1. There's a 53 point, 0 0.537, 0 0.537, a 53.7% chance that in this class there's less than two people that are left-handed. Turns out there's four, so we beat the odds. Uh, by the way, a number of studies have been done in this past, starting with the 1900s and going up to this century. Uh, I think it's six out of 14 US presidents have been left-handed, which is way above the norm. And many, many people have wondered if that says something or not. Research papers have been written. So Obama is left-handed, Clinton was left-handed, the first George Bush was left-handed, uh, Reagan was ambidextrous, a um, lot of them have been left-handed. Number 12 says the probability that a computer chip produced in a factory is defective is 2%. How many chips are we sampling? 100. Do I want to do a 100 level tree? This is a job for the binomial probability distribution. You can either go 100, choose. Uh, if 95 are not defective, I guess that means, oh, at least 95 are not defective. At least 95 are not defective. I think that means that four or less are defective. So since it's four or less, I don't think I'm going to use the choose model. It's four or less. I'm going to use cumulative. I'm going to go four or less, 100. Probability that we are defective is 0 0.02. So I am in the binomial cumulative, because it's got a letter C there, distribution. Four or less from 100, 0 0.02. The probability that there's four or less, 0.9492. For two marks here, I would give you a half mark if you use that, a half mark for the numbers, and then one mark for the answer. And that brings us to the end of this quiz. There was a lot on this quiz. This was a review of everything. Let me pause the video for one second.